There is no denying that what went down in Chernobyl on that fateful day was one of the greatest man-made catastrophes in human history. And in the wreckage that was left behind, all manner of odd curiosities have been stumbled upon. Stuff that'll mess with your mind and toy with your heart. These are the weirdest things ever found at Chernobyl. Number 20. Mutated Animals Immediately following the Chernobyl incident, alarms spiked of oddly mutated animals. In all the nearby regions surrounding the power station, animals were being born with the most gruesome and devastating mutations as a result of the massive amounts of radiation. These animals didn't live very long and also were unable to reproduce, putting a lot of local species in danger. But it was only when some scientists went back to the immediate areas around the station that they discovered the most severe cases. What scientists discovered in Chernobyl shocked the whole world. And I mean for real. They saw cow calves with a pair of legs growing out of their neck. Others had been born without an upper jaw and were unable to eat. They saw a fawn with six pairs of legs, even birds with two heads. These deformities made the animals' lives a total misery. It was hard to watch, but eventually the deformities dialed down, all until 1989 when the number of deformities unfortunately spiked again. Scientists believe it to be the result of radiation released from the sarcophagus intended to isolate the nuclear core. In 1990 alone, around 400 deformed animals were born. Most deformities were so severe, the animals only lived a few hours. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. This horrifying photo looks like a Francis Bacon painting, but the truth is far more haunting than that. This peculiar image is not a painting, but a photo, and it was found drifting on the windy streets of Chernobyl. While exploring, some scientists found this thing on the ground, and nobody's quite clear where this thing came from, or who the guy in the photo is, or what happened to him for him to look like this. Truly haunting stuff. What do you think? Who is this guy? What happened to him? And where is he now? Now, all we know is this. What scientists discovered in Chernobyl shocked the whole world. As always, comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. USSR Propaganda Pripyat was the city built nearby the Chernobyl nuclear power station to house all the staff and workers that had to commute there every day. After the accident of 1986, the city was immediately evacuated because of the extremely dangerous levels of radiation escaping from the station. But once it was safe to go back to the now ghost city, you won't believe what they found. At the time of the accident, Russia was still the Soviet Union, so it's perfectly normal to expect some Soviet propaganda. But they didn't just find some propaganda, no. The entire town was drowned in it. I'm talking statues, books, pamphlets, posters, flyers, and much, much more. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense, given that a Soviet nuclear power station meant that they were just as good as any capitalist enemy country. Therefore, it was thought of as their crown jewel along with their space program. And Pripyat is a perfect snapshot of the Soviet era frozen in the past. They even found a room filled with nothing other than portraits of Soviet leaders. Yeah, the USSR was pretty big on propaganda, as with any communist regime, really. Number 18. Thriving Wildlife as crazy as this might sound, the Chernobyl area today has very healthy and prolific wildlife. Even more than before the accident, when humans were living there. Within the exclusion zone, which covers an area of approximately one square mile in Ukraine immediately surrounding the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, there hasn't been any human activity or presence since April of 1968. Which means that now that the radiation is no longer lethal, the wild animals can live there at their leisure without fear of being hunted or killed by people. There's also the fact that their habitat's not in danger of disappearing by the construction of buildings. And not only wildlife, nature is also thriving. The trees and plants are incredibly healthy and lush. Kinda makes you think, 
what's more devastating for the fauna and flora, a nuclear disaster or human impact? But still, this is a message of hope. It's incredible how rapidly nature bounced back in only 35 years. So much so that the exclusion zone is today the third largest nature reserve in mainland Europe. There, you can see the elusive lynx, bison, deer, and wolves all roaming around a very thick forest. Number 17. Silhouettes of Missing Townspeople Pripyat City was completely abandoned on April 2nd, 1986, which is the day after the accident in the nuclear reactor occurred. But before having to be evacuated, some people took to the spray paint cans and decided to paint these eerie black silhouettes all over the city. They actually represent the people that are no longer with us because of the disaster. Quite a lot of people lost their lives back then. In one room, there's a little girl with pigtails reaching for a light switch, and in another room, there are three children jumping, or maybe floating, as their spirits linger on. This tradition started after the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, when Parisian street artists started to do similar silhouettes in the streets of Paris to protest the millions of lives lost then. They're called permanent shadows, and they're very similar to the ones left on the Japanese buildings of actually real people. This graffiti is still in Pripyat today, although most of it's peeling away, and some are sadly being vandalized. But new graffiti pieces appear every day from new and younger artists, and they are quite breathtaking. Number 16. An Abandoned Carnival when you think about one of modern history's most devastating nuclear disasters, you don't usually think about fun times and leisure. And that's why the fact that there's still an abandoned carnival within the exclusion zone is nothing more than unsettling and eerie. The Pripyat Amusement Park was a brand new construction that was supposed to have its grand opening on May 1st, 1986, just in time for May Day celebrations. For obvious reasons, this never happened. So not only is this carnival in one of the most lethal places on Earth, it actually actually never opened. It is, to this date, completely virgin. Nobody has ever been on these rides. The most notorious symbol of Chernobyl is actually its massive and abandoned Ferris wheel. That attraction would have brought so much joy and good memories for all the families living in Pripyat, but it never had the chance to do so. Today, the entire park has been reclaimed by nature, with trees and plants growing everywhere. It truly is a haunting place. The area under the Ferris wheel actually has one of the highest levels of radiation in the entire exclusion zone. Number 15. Tourists Believe it or not, Chernobyl has a flourishing tourism industry today. Some 60,000 people visited the exclusion zone in 2017 alone. Any given day, you can see large groups of people from all over the world just wandering about armed with Geiger counters to measure radiation levels. And some historians have actually been vocal about their concerns about what this means for the memories behind the site home to the most tragic and devastating nuclear accident in human history. But is it safe to go to Chernobyl? Well, first of all, all tourists entering the exclusion zone can only go on a supervised tour, and as they exit, they have to go through checkpoints to test for radiation. Visitors are also advised to not wear shorts or open toe shoes at all. In fact, as the tour guides will tell you, the more clothes, the better. But of course, there are always risks, especially if you take a radioactive souvenir with you. There's even been an instance of a stalker dying while he was trying to climb up the Soviet era radar because he wanted to take a selfie. People that work there are also very concerned about tourists littering. It seems that they've lost the respect about what actually went down there. Considering that any trash left behind at Chernobyl can't be disposed of in the usual way, it's quite disrespectful. Number 14. A bunch of old ladies. As you already know, the exclusion zone is very dangerous due to its high levels of radiation. Even today, Chernobyl's water, soil, and air are amongst the most highly contaminated on the planet. But there is apparently a group of people that, knowing all this, still choose to live there willingly. They are called the Self Settlers, and they are a community of about 130 individuals, and almost all of them are women. 
The press has dubbed them as the Babushkas of Chernobyl because they're mostly in their 70s or 80s. But these are not new residents of the area. When the accident happened, about 116,000 people were evacuated, but about 1,200 of them simply refused to stay away. These babushkas are the last remaining survivors of those who illegally returned to their ancestral home. Each village has at least 11 or 12 babushkas or babas in it. Hannah Zavaratnya, a self-settler, explains how she snuck back to her village through the bushes in the summer of 1986. A young soldier found her and she simply told him, shoot us and dig a grave, otherwise we're staying. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I would not mess with these badass Ukrainian babas. Number 13. Piles of Creepy Dolls after decades of horror movies under our collective belt, one thing is established as a universal fact of life. Old, broken down dolls are scary as hell. So what about a ghost town home of the most dramatic nuclear disaster that also harbors a ton of creepy dolls? But it's not like these are a normal amount of dolls left behind by the children that had to evacuate with their families. <clears throat> no, it is an insanely unusual amount of dolls. There are so many it actually looks kind of staged. It could be possible that someone put them there on purpose, but because of the fact that they're incredibly radioactive, it's clear that they've been there since 1986. Everywhere you go in Pripyat, demonic looking dolls stare at you. They sit on window sills, they're propped up on skeletal bed metal frames, or sprawled out in piles of debris. Some of them are even wearing tiny little gas masks. Okay, that one might have been brought by a tourist for an Instagram pic. If you think about it, this is the perfect premise for a new horror movie. An army of creepy dolls that came to life because of the radiation and are hungry for human blood. Number 12. A room filled with gas masks. One of the most striking scenes in Pripyat is inside one of the abandoned schools there. In the cafeteria of the primary school, the floor is covered with Soviet-era gas masks. And by covered, I mean mountains of masks absolutely everywhere. As we now know, gas masks can protect you from alpha and beta radiation, but they're as good as nothing against gamma radiation. So those masks would have been useless during the reactor's blow up. It's quite heartbreaking to see a place dedicated to toddlers and children with so much military equipment designed to save people's lives. All those gas masks are a small size, were all meant to be worn by children. It's a devastating scene to witness. Apparently, all Soviet public places has storage for gas masks, such as schools, universities, factories, libraries. In Chernobyl, the situation was a little more risky, as they were actually prepared for a nuclear attack coming from the United States, as they were arch enemies and had been entangled in the Cold War for decades. They actually had classes where they taught the kids how to put on and how and when to safely remove the masks in case of an attack. Attack. Ironically, they never thought that the danger would come from the peaceful electricity generator located only three kilometers from that very same primary school. Number 11. The largest object ever moved by humans. Can you guess what it is? It's actually a sarcophagus, but not the kind that you and me will one day be buried in. No, this one is, uh, let's say, slightly larger. This sarcophagus is actually the shelter structure they used to completely cover the nuclear reactor number four building of the power plant. You know, the one that actually blew up and caused so much destruction and death. The sarcophagus is made out of solid steel and concrete and is, for lack of a better phrase, insanely massive. More specifically, it is 400,000 cubic meters of concrete and 7,300 cubic meters of metal framework. It was designed to limit the radioactive contamination of the environment. This amazing structure was able to lock in 200 tons of radioactive lava-like corium, 30 tons of highly contaminated dust, and 16 tons of uranium and plutonium. I mean, that is hands down impressive. By 1996, the structure had so much radioactive exposure that it was showing clear signs of deterioration. They had to go back in to reinforce it. The new safe confinement is 108 meters high and 162 meters long. It has a span of 257 meters and a lifetime of a minimum of 100 years. It weighs 36,000 tons. 
Number 10. Radiation Eating Fungus As you can imagine, it wasn't just people and animals and plants that were gravely affected by radiation exposure in Chernobyl. Insects, microbes, and fungi got affected as much as the rest. And because of this, the forest in the exclusion zone isn't decaying properly. What's the link? Well, microbes, fungi, and some types of insect are responsible for driving the process of decay. They are crucially important components in a healthy ecosystem. Their job is to recycle matter back into the soil. They're the invisible garbage men of nature, in a way. Without them, matter would keep piling up and emit toxic materials that are very dangerous to the health of every living organism. On the other hand, years after the disaster, they sent a robot to explore reactor number four, and they actually found a type of black mold all over the walls. How could any living organism survive in such high levels of radioactive exposure? They discovered that this was a radiotrophic fungus. Not only could it tolerate the radiation, it actually grew towards it. In other words, it was likely using it as a source of energy. As you can see, life uh, finds a way, even in a nuclear wasteland. Number 9. Abandoned Church in Chernobyl In the remote village of Krantz, west of the Pripyat River in Ukraine, there is an abandoned church. This church isn't within the exclusion zone, but nonetheless had to be evacuated after the nuclear accident. And today, 35 years later, it is still in a pristine and immaculate state that offers visitors an elusive glimpse of the Soviet era perfectly preserved and frozen in time. All of the original artifacts are still there as well, including numerous crosses, letters from visitors at the time, and several perfectly preserved religious murals that cover the majority of the church's walls and ceilings. On the main altar, there's a mysterious letter from a previous priest that urges any visitors to take good care of the holy house. It's almost like something granted him his wish, and it came true by simply removing the possibility of visitors altogether. Today, a group of religious people and priests have decided to give the church its life back. Every Sunday, services are held there even if the church is very far away from any nearby town. They've brought a new altar and a table where they can share a meal, but nobody, not even the priest, touches the artifacts and the icons that were there before. Number 8. Mysterious Fish in this cooling pond where loads of radioactive material was dumped after the explosion of reactor number four, there are actually lots of fish living today. You wouldn't think so, as it's still highly contaminated, but as you can see, not only are these catfish thriving, they are also perfectly normal and not at all mutated. Bart Simpson would be very disappointed to see that the fish here don't have three eyes. They're just ordinary, regular catfish. Well, aside from the fact that they're ginormous, but that actually has a perfectly normal explanation as well. You see, catfish have indeterminate growth, which means that they'll continue to grow their entire lifespan. And here, in the radioactive waters of Chernobyl, the catfish not only have no predators, they also get fed every day by tourists. So much so that they've become a tourist attraction. Also, nobody in their right mind would fish them, as they are incredibly contaminated, and eating them would be like signing your own death certificate. Therefore, these chunky boys are able to grow as much as they damn well please. Some of them are too mean meters long. Number 7. Abandoned Houses As you can probably guess, the city of Pripyat is basically a ghost town, which means that all the houses there are completely abandoned and have been for the last 35 years. But this place is unique in the sense of how it actually came to be abandoned. The city of Pripyat didn't just slowly die down in several stages through numerous years. No, the entire city had to be evacuated in one day amidst the worst nuclear disaster in human history. In other words, people were terrified and chaos ruled as people were forced to leave their homes behind with nothing more than their documentation and one change of clothes. That's it. So the ambiance and the vibe of this place is very unique, macabre, and dark. It has been frozen in time. On the 26th of April, 1986, this city stopped existing as such. In only one day, it went from a vibrant and happy city to a nuclear wasteland where nobody would be permitted to step foot for years and years to come. So if you feel a sense of unease as you explore the abandoned houses of Pripyat, well, that's because this place still holds the devastation of that day. Number 6. A lot of radiation. So, yeah, guess what? 
All around that nuclear power plant that quite literally exploded, they found loads of radiation. Who would have thunk it, am I right? But in all seriousness, when I say loads, I mean crazy amounts of radiation. Let's start by understanding how radiation is actually measured. So one way of measuring it is by measuring the dose of radiation received, and the unit of measurement used is called a millisievert. So by this logic, if a person is exposed to 10,000 millisieverts in a single dose, that person, without exception, will die within weeks. The typical dosage that was recorded in the Chernobyl workers that unfortunately died within a month was of 6,000 millisieverts. The radiation levels in the worst hit areas of the reactor building, including the control room, have been estimated at 300,000 millisieverts. Put that into perspective, during the Chernobyl disaster, 400 times more radioactive material was released into the environment than at the atomic bombing of Hiroshima during the Second World War. 22 years after the explosion, the radiation levels inside the reactor hall were approximately 34,000 millisieverts, which means that after only 10 to 20 minutes of exposure, it becomes a lethal dose. And that's over two decades after the accident. Number 5. The Red Forest this forest covers 10 square kilometers surrounding the nuclear power plant in Chernobyl within the exclusion zone located in Polesia. The name Red Forest actually comes from the fact that all the pine trees in this forest became ginger brown in color after they all died following the absorption of insanely high levels of radiation. In the aftermath of the incident, the Red Forest was consequently bulldozed and buried in waste graveyards. The forest became a part of the zone of alienation, which is the area that received the highest doses of radiation. So much so that even today, this spot is one of the most contaminated areas on the entire planet. In the post-disaster cleanup operations, the majority of the contaminated pine trees were buried in trenches by the liquidators. They were then covered in a thick layer of sand. But many scientists fear that as the pine trees inevitably decay over the years, they will release more radioactive contaminants that could leach into the water and the soil. That's why the zone around the Red Forest remains to this day absolutely forbidden for humans. More than 90% of the radioactivity of the Red Forest is actually concentrated in the soil. Number 4. The Elephant's Foot This picture will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. It depicts the infamous and deadly elephant's foot. The elephant's foot is the nickname that was given to the large mass of corium and other materials that formed inside the nuclear power plant. This is what started the most severe nuclear disaster of all of human history. What you're looking at is the infamous reactor number four. It was originally designed to vent steam, but on that day, the reactor experienced meltdown. The molten nuclear fuel melted the concrete and sand and eventually seeped through the pipe network below. This picture in particular was actually taken by the workers who pushed a camera on a chair around the corner to see what was causing the massive spike in the radiation levels at the plant. The thing was so lethal that if you spent two minutes beside it, the cells in your body would start draining. Ugh. Double that time of exposure and you would immediately start to throw up, experience violent diarrhea, and run a burning temperature all over your body. Now, if for some reason you decided to stick around for just 60 seconds more, you would be dead without exception within 48 hours. Number 3. The Hospital Room Number 126 People often talk about the nuclear disaster when they talk about Chernobyl, but they don't talk enough about the brave men that were sent there to actually put out the fires, knowing that they would all get lethally exposed to radiation. Needless to say, all those men died shortly after that day. In the basement of the Pripyat Hospital, there's a room numbered 126, and this room has been dubbed as the Hell Room because this is where those brave firefighters' radioactive clothing was abandoned. The protective suits have been laying there ever since, resulting in the basement becoming one of the most radioactive places in the entire exclusion zone. This same hospital also took in the first victims of the disaster, and all their clothing and objects they carried were sent to the basement. 
35 years later, the radioactive clothing is still there, emitting about 4 rent gen per hour, which exceeds the norm by hundreds of thousands of times. Today, it is strictly forbidden to visit the hospital basement without the proper protective suit and a highly trained guide. The Ukrainian government does not issue many passes to this particular section of Chernobyl. Number 2. The Secret Soviet Hidden Radar As we said earlier in this video, the Soviets were extremely paranoid about the US launching a missile attack against Chernobyl. And I mean, who wouldn't be? The US weren't particularly shy with their nuclear attacks. So the Soviets decided to build an over-the-horizon radar designed to detect an intercontinental missile attack. They named it Duga. And on April 21st, 2021, Alexander Tikachenko, the Minister of Culture and Information Policy, listed the radar as a protected monument for preservation. During the Cold War, Duga was one of the favorite topics of conversation for conspiracy theorists. In 1976, radio listeners started hearing a very mysterious signal during their radio programs all throughout Europe. Apparently, it sounded like a continuous tapping sound. At first, it was just annoying, but nothing more. But shortly after, the mysterious sound started interfering with emergency aircraft communication. Upon investigation, they realized the signal was coming from the other side of the Iron Curtain and nicknamed it the Russian Woodpecker. And apparently, the disturbance was specifically coming from a place that was labeled on the map as a children's camp inside the woods surrounding Chernobyl. This was, of course, a Soviet military base, and the signal was coming from Duga. Number 1. Ghost Town Pripyat was abandoned exactly 36 hours after the explosion at Reactor No. 4, and it is still today an abandoned ghost town. It's located in northern Ukraine near the Ukraine-Belarus border, and it was named after the river Pripyat. By the time of the accident, Pripyat was actually a very new town. It was founded in 1970 as the 9th Atomgrad, which was a very specific type of closed town in the Soviet Union that were built as settlements where travel or residency restrictions are applied. In other words, you would have needed a specific authorization to remain overnight or even to visit. Pripyat was officially proclaimed a city in 1979, so seven years later it had to be evacuated forever. Nuclear power stations were considered a huge achievement of Soviet engineering. They even had a slogan for it, the peaceful atom. Therefore, the city of Pripyat wasn't really closed to visitors. The Soviet Union deemed nuclear power stations safer than any other type of power plants. As we know today, that was very incorrect. Today, it's still illegal to live in the city due to the high amounts of radiation, so the entire place is deserted. Everything was left behind because people had to evacuate in a hurry if they didn't want to get contaminated themselves. As you can see, Chernobyl is, at the same time, an eerie and tragic place, but also a precious and very interesting bit of our history. How do you feel about nuclear power after watching this video? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!